Hello my friends, today we're going to be solving one step equations. Now solving equations is going to be a key skill for your mathematics career. So get focused, get ready to really understand these. They're not too difficult and here we go. So there's three main things you want to remember when solving equations. One, remember to use your properties of equality. Remember that just means do the same thing on each side of the equal sign. Uh, you're going to use your inverses and the inverses are going to be very useful in isolating your variable. Getting your variable, remember a variable is just a letter that represents a number that we're trying to find and we want to get that all by itself. Okay let's go do some examples. Now first we have x plus 2 equals 5. Now to get my variable by itself here, notice I have this plus 2. Now if I want to get this plus 2 away from this x, I can use uh, my additive inverse. So my additive inverse for 2 is going to be minus 2. I have to use my property of equality, my subtraction property of equality, subtract 2 from both sides. Uh, this 2 is going to go away, that's going to leave me with x equals, and I have 5 minus 2 on the right, which is 3. And there's my answer. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at uh, number 2. We have negative 3 equals y minus 1. Now this time the variable's on the right side, well that's okay. We still want to get the variable all by itself. So I notice that I have a minus 1 attached to this y, so let's go ahead and use our additive inverse here. I'm going to add 1 to this side because I know that'll cancel out my minus 1 there so I have to use my property of equality on this side and add 1. These will cancel out and I'm going to be left with my y all by itself is equal to negative 3 plus 1 which is negative 2. Let's move on down here. Here we have 5a equals 12. Notice this uh, 5 is right next to the a, so that's multiplication. So, to get my a by itself, to isolate my variable, I'm going to have to do my inverse of this 5, or the opposite. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and divide by 5, because 5 divided by 5 is going to give me 1. Uh, 12 over here, I'm also going to divide by 5, because I have to use my division property of equality, and do that to both sides. So these 5's are going to go away. And I'm going to be left with my a all by itself over here. And I have 12 divided by 5. I can just leave that as a fraction because it does not go in evenly. And there's my answer. a equals 12 fifths. Alright, here we have negative b divided by 2. Remember this fraction is also like division. So negative b divided by 2 equals negative 20. So my inverse of division is going to be multiplication here. So I can multiply by negative 2 on the left, use my property of equality, multiply by negative 2 on the right, those are going to get rid of, uh, that's going to get rid of my 2 on the bottom, leaving me with just a b equals, so I've isolated my variable and I have negative 20 times negative 2, which is a positive 40. Now notice on any of these problems, if you're not sure if you got it right, you can plug in your answer back into the original equation. So here I have x equals 3, I could plug this in here and I'd have 3 plus 2 equals 5, which is true. I've got negative 2 here, so negative 3 equals negative 2 minus 1. That's negative 3, so that's true. And you can do the same things with these. So if you're not sure if you did it correctly, you can always just plug it back in to the variables. Alright, two more quick things and we'll be good to go. Let's take a look at this one. Here we have 3 fourths times x equals 1 half. Notice your variables on your left side multiplying by this 3 fourths. So remember the inverse of a fraction, whenever you have a fraction here, is uh, the reciprocal. So in this case we would multiply by the reciprocal which means you flip the numerator and the denominator. All I did was flip uh, the 3 and the 4 here. So instead of 3 fourths, I have 4 thirds. Multiply that. Don't forget your property of equality. We have to multiply 
by the same exact thing on the right side. This four thirds and three fourths here, those are gonna cancel each other out. And we're gonna be left with our variable by itself on this side. Here we have one half times four thirds. I multiply the one times the four to get four, two times the three on the bottom to give me six. And we do have our variable by, its, by ourself, but always remember we do want to, whoops, trying to give ourselves some more room here. Uh, we always want to simplify our answer. So this four six, I have a two that can go into the four and a two can go into the six. That's gonna give me two thirds as our answer. Let's go ahead and do one quick word problem to show how how these one-step equations can be useful in solving maybe a real-life situation. Now, a lot of learners get intimidated once they see words. Try not to, because once you're scared of the problem, it gets a lot more difficult to think. But word problems are no different than any other type of problem. All you need to do is pick out the pieces that you want, set it up, and you'll just be solving like normal. So let's see if we can do that here. Uh, Gabriel has practiced piano every day, Monday through Saturday, for a total of eight hours of practice. If he wants to practice at least 10 hours a week, how long must he practice on Sunday? All right, so here we have a situation. Gabriel, he's practiced for eight hours, Monday through Saturday. He wants to practice a total of 10 hours. They're asking how long he has to practice on Sunday. Now, a lot of you might say, well, obviously, that has to be two hours because eight plus two is 10, which you'd be correct. But we do want to practice our skills in setting up equations and showing your work. Now, some of you say, well, I don't need to show my work. I could just do it in my head. But you won't always be able to do it in your head. So this is a great skill to have in being able to set up those problems and communicate your thought process all those things. So here, we want to set, show our work. We want to try to make an equation to represent this situation. So first, let's start with defining our variables. First, what are we trying to find? We do not know how long he must practice on Sunday. So let's go ahead and say that x equals the time he will practice on Sunday. The time you will practice on Sunday, that's what we're trying to find out. So I chose that to be my variable. Now let's see if we can set up an equation. So we know he's already practiced Monday through Saturday for a total of eight hours. So we've got eight hours of practice. We know he wants to, he wants to practice a total of 10 hours. Now our total, we don't want to add our total to eight. Our total is gonna to signal to us that that's what we're gonna equal here. We know our total is 10 hours. Whenever you are you have some total, that's always what you're gonna equal here. Now we wanna know how long must he practice on Sunday? Well, we know that the practice time for Sunday is X, so let's go ahead and add that to uh, the amount of time he's already practiced. So here we have the eight hours he's practiced already plus the time he'll spend to practice on Sunday and that's gonna equal our total of 10. Now we have an equation that we can solve. Here we have eight plus x equals 10. We wanna isolate our variable. So what's our inverse for eight? Positive eight over here. We wanna subtract eight, so I'm gonna minus eight over here. Don't forget your property of equality, minus eight on the other side. That's gonna go away. And we're gonna be left with our variable x equals 10 minus eight, which is two. So our answer is gonna be two hours, which is what we had discussed before. So remember, just read through it, think about it, assign your variables, set up your equation, then solve.